Ruby Frankie has thrown Jody under the bus, took a plea deal, and we learned about just how bad the situation was in that house. And we're going to talk about it in today's video. <music> Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the sofa. Sofa's back there. Mr. Roscoe's holding it down. My name's Paul. Now, today we're going to be doing an update and commentary reaction to Ruby Frankie's plea deal. Now, what we will do is before we get into it, I'll do a very quick 60 second overview of this case in case you haven't been following it. So you're kind of on board and get the context of what I'm talking about. Now, before we jump into everything, if you want to see what Roscoe and I do when we're not sitting here in the sofa with you hanging out, go on and follow me on the Insta, on the gram, on the Instagram. It's on the screen. It's not in the description below. We'd appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you there. Hopefully, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into that 60 second overview. Okay, so Ruby Frankie at one point had a very successful YouTube channel. It was named Eight Passengers. It's a family vlog channel and she was arrested and charged with crimes against her children after one of them escaped her business partner Jody Hildebrandt's home and ran to a neighbor's. Now, this situation was not good, okay? It was obvious the kids had been restrained. They were malnourished. It was very bad. Now, Jody along with Ruby were arrested and charged with numerous crimes, which we're going to get into those today. Now, Jody was an alleged, and I'm talking major, major air quotes, life coach who seemingly coached people's lives into devastation. And person after person has come forward talking about how Jody has destroyed their life, you know, or their family's life and just caused all sorts of drama. So all this information has come forth. So that being said, shockingly, her website is still up. So that's very quickly, 60 second overview, the gist of what we're talking about here. It's way deeper than that, but I just like to provide some context before we get into the updates. I'll also give my opinion at the very end of the video on some things and well I can't help it I usually give it throughout the video too. So anyways let's go ahead and talk about the updates what's going on. Now very quickly before we actually get into some footage because I want to look at her court appearance and talk about that but let's just talk very quickly the the pragmatic aspect. So Ruby has taken a plea deal. Now she originally had six charges. It's been reduced to four different charges. We're going to talk about them in depth in a minute. So she's pleading, pleading guilty to those charges her sentencing date will be on February 20th now part of this plea deal she is going to be testifying against Jody and I'll talk about that but very quickly I do think that Jody is who they probably really, really want. I mean, obviously they want to hold Ruby accountable, but Jody, there's so many people who have come out against her. And so I have a feeling that this is probably their way of being like, we're going to, you know, number one, bring justice for the children against Ruby, but also we're going to nail Jody. What she ended up doing is pleading guilty to four counts of second degree aggravated child abuse. This was in relation to two of her children. Now, one thing I want to do in this video is I want to talk about the actual details of what she has signed off on and agreed to that she did. It's bad. Trigger warning. Secondary, I want to read and go through her lawyer's statement about the whole Jody thing because that was very interesting. But first, let's start taking a couple of looks at some clips of her in court. And then I'm going to talk about my thoughts on it. So again, just hold this. Uh, if you follow this case, keep all this in mind. Now, the context is she is there. Her family, meaning her like parents, sisters, people like that are behind her. Remember, the husband has filed for divorce. So he was like... I'm out of here, saving face, whatever he had to do, right? So keep that in mind. So she's sitting here with her attorney. She is going over the pragmatics with the judge that they always do to make sure, you know, basically you're voluntarily doing this. You haven't been promised anything, all that. So watch her body language and demeanor. On the 18th. Okay. You've read it carefully? Every word. Your signature represents to the court that you've read it carefully, that you understand what you've read, and that you agree to all of the terms. Is that all accurate? Yes. Well, go ahead and drink it from the cup on that one. She read every word, and it's accurate, and she agrees to it. So, let's get into what exactly she's agreeing that she did. We knew it was bad. Okay, when this came out on the heels of Shonda Vander Ark's trial, on the heels of the Boy in the Box trial, thank God the children are alive in this case. Because I, I, if she had been left, her and Jody left to their own devices, it would have been way more tragic. I can almost 100% assure you of that. Of course, 
that's just my opinion. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read from this, so just bear with me. Now, trigger warning, y'all, trigger warning, okay? This is talking about what exactly was done to these two children, and it's not pretty, okay? So if this is too much, totally get it. Skip over the next couple of minutes. So from approximately May 22nd, 2023 until August 30th, 2023, Washington County, Utah, the defendant, Ruby Franke, intentionally or knowingly inflicted and allowed another adult to inflict serious physical injuries upon her children that were ages 9, parentheses, EF, and 11 to 12, RF, as more fully described below. So count one it goes into. The defendant's actions involved the physical of RF. Initially, RF was forced to do physical tasks for hours and days at a time. These included wall sets, carrying boxes full of books up and down stairs, and working outside. Eventually, RF was forced to do outside labor without shoes and in the summer heat. He was forced to stand in the direct sunlight for several days. He was forced to remain outside at all hours of the day and night for extended periods of time. These actions resulted in repeated and serious sunburns with blistered and slowing skin. Sorry to mispronounce that word. RF was denied adequate water for several of the days he was required to remain in the summer heat, and he was punished when he secretly consumed water. He was denied sufficient food, and when given food, he was given very plain meals, rice and chicken, while others in the house ate regular and more flavorful meals. He was isolated from other people and denied all forms of entertainment, including books, notebooks, and electronics. In addition, after RF attempted to run away in July, his hands and feet were regularly bound. Binding included being tied to the defendant and to weights. Many times the binding included using two sets of handcuffs, one of RF's wrist and one on his ankles. At times with RF lying on his stomach, ropes were used to tie the two sets of handcuffs together so that his arms and lower legs were lifted off the ground. The bindings resulted in injuries to RF's wrist and ankles where the handcuffs cut through the skin and damaged the muscle tissue. These injuries were treated with home homeopathic remedies and covered with duct tape. Then the bindings were placed on top of the duct tape. Let's move on to the second little screenshot here. Specific instances of committed by the defendant include number one kicking rf while wearing boots number two holding his head underwater and number three cutting off oxygen by placing her hands over his mouth and nose count two the actions described above caused severe emotional harm to rf due to the fact that they began in may and escalated throughout the summer months additionally the defendant and another adult regularly sought to indoctrinate rf and convince him that he was evil and possessed and that he needed to willingly be obedient to avoid punishments and that the punishments were necessary to repent. He was also told that everything that was being done to him were acts of love. Count three, the defendant's actions also caused severe emotional harm to EF. Other than binding and the specific instances of abuse, RF was subjected to, EF was subjected to the same treatment as her brother. She was isolated and forced to do the physical task, remain outside, and denied food and water. She was also repeatedly told she was evil and possessed. The punishments were necessary for her to be obedient and to repent, and these things were being done to her in order to help her. EF was convinced that she was all evil and needed to go through these things in order to repent. The defendant's action caused two or more physical injuries to EF. She was forced to work outside in the heat barefoot. She was also forced to run barefoot on dirt roads for an extended period of time. EF's feet were repeatedly injured by, and she was repeatedly sunburned. When examined on August 30th, these wounds were apparent by scabs, blisters, and sloughing skin. Okay, y'all, that, when I read that, I was like, I mean, we knew it was bad when, and again, if you followed this, I'm going to reference that 911 phone call made by the neighbor when the children, one of the children escaped Jody's home and ran there and was like looking for help. And he was like, you can tell they've been bound. There was like, you know, he could see these injuries we're hearing here. But remember, if you go back to that phone call where we can hear the child in the background where he was essentially trying to say that it was their fault, like, you know, not trying to blame his parents. Well, now, or his mother and Jody, whatever, now that we find out what was going on. I mean, y'all, again, we just wrapped up a trial with Shonda Vander Ark, the same type of stuff. Literally, they took a page out of the book. Now, also combined with this is this very much like Lori and Chad Daybell vibe of the, you're evil, you're possessed, you have to do this to repent and all that. You know, this whole thing mixed in. 
it's so scary and it's so absolutely heartbreaking and infuriating. Okay. <laughs> because when you go back and you look at, or, you know, the eight passengers and all this type stuff, and then you know what was going on. Now, mind you, I know this is talking about a specific time frame, but if you have followed their channel and watched it, these bizarre forms of punishment were already going on on a different level in that household. It wasn't like out of the blue. Now that we've gone over the charges, so on and so forth. Let's listen to her talking with the judge, pleading guilty. Now this one, hardcore, watch her when she's like guilty or whatever, watch her and we'll talk about it afterwards. <clears throat> Ms. Frankie, how do you plead to count one aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony? Guilty. To count three aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony? Guilty. To count five, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony. Guilty. And to count six, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony. With my deepest regret and sorrow for my family and my children, guilty. Can't roll my eyes hard enough. Drink it from the cup on that one if you've got yours ready. Here's my thing. And I'm not trying to sit here and say people can't realize, oh my God, I've made a mistake. I need to change. Whatever, right? A hundred percent. We can probably all say that, right? Reading those things that we just read. And she's going to sit up here now and make that face. Guilty. Guilty. You know, and then try and slide that in there. With my deepest regrets, no, you're upset because you got caught, okay? Because she was very high on her horse doing all these things. Putting, I mean, she's putting on social media, right? Maybe not these specific crimes that she's charged of, but the other stuff she put out there, very proud of this bizarre behavior. Now, on that, what I want to do is I want to read the lawyer's statement about you know her what her thoughts are on jody and all that and then we'll talk about it more okay so you'll see on the screen here it says when word law is making a statement on behalf of ruby frankie regarding the pending charges in the washington county fifth district court along with her thoughts about her current family situation our client is working with the prosecutor's office and anticipates resolving this matter quickly by entering a plea agreement with the court on monday december 18th now it says quote ruby frankie is a devoted mother and is also a woman committed to constant improvement. Initially, Miss Frankie believed that Jody Hildebrandt had the insight to offer a path to continual improvement. Miss Hildebrandt took advantage of this quest and twisted it into something heinous. Over an extended period, Miss Hildebrandt systematically isolated Ruby Frank from her extended family, older children, and her husband Kevin Frankie. This prolonged isolation resulted in Miss Frankie being subjected to a distorted sense of of morality shaped by Miss Hildebrandt's influence. During Ruby Frankie's incarceration in Washington County Jail over the past few months, she has actively engaged in an introspection that has allowed her to reset her moral compass and understand the full weight of her actions. Miss Frankie is committed to taking responsibility for the part she played in the events leading up to her incarceration. Demonstrating a sincere dedication to personal growth and rehabilitation, she has actively begun the process by reaching out to members of her family. Through heartfelt apologies, she seeks to mend relationships and contribute positively to the healing journey of her family. Ruby is aware that Kevin Frankie has filed for divorce. While she is devastated by this news, she acknowledges and understands his anger and reasoning. Despite the pain, she respects his decisions and remains hopeful that, with time, she can contribute to rebuilding trust and fostering understanding within their family. Ruby has offered her full cooperation to help the children reunite with their father. Windward Law recognizes the profound love that Miss Frankie holds for her children, and we are genuinely saddened that she found herself on this challenging path under the influence of Miss Hildebrand. It is our firm belief that Miss Frankie is a devoted mother who, unfortunately, was led astray. She is sincere in her commitment to securing the best possible future for her family, and we remain hopeful that, with the right support and understanding, she can navigate a path of healing and growth. Now, before I even say something, let me sip it from the cup of what about before Jody? Okay, please. That is my first 
thing. I mean, I, literally, I'm reading this. Can we talk about before Jody? Cause she wasn't with Jody this whole time. Okay. Now maybe she is able to slide under the radar of these very specific charges and claim that Jody twisted her morality and all this type of stuff to do that. But again, we've seen the references, the videos of not bringing her kid uh, food, the weird behavior of the food control at home, you know, and the, oh, he doesn't have a bed. He doesn't have the, the absolute way she got off on the power over her children and then to read this and I understand that this is the lawyer saying this you know and speaking for her I get it and he's obviously hamming it up of course he is that's her lawyer that's her defense attorney that's what they're there to do I have no doubt that she has probably looked back over her life and been like oh whoa but I don't think it's for these reasons first of all he's talking about she's been in jail for three months I'm like girl that's like um, I know it seems longer to her because she's in there and time is like, you know, stretched out, but that's a blink in, in time. That's like a blip. It doesn't even register. And so it'd be like, oh, I've reset my moral compass. No, mm -mm, absolutely do not believe that. It's just going to take way more time than that. I'm glad she's reaching out to her family. But here's the other thing that was going through my mind. If she went to trial on this, which she would lose, right? Imagine the children testifying. Now, one could look at it in two ways. She doesn't want to put the kids through that. She's really come around. Or God knows what the children would say. That's how I look at it. God knows what all they would say. In addition to them testifying against their mother, right? I mean, that's the heartbreaking part of it. By doing this, she still maintains control over the narrative to a degree. Now, mind you, you saw her eyes when she was up there. Guilty. Guilty. You know, it was heinous what we read here and that she's agreeing to this and like signed her name. Yes, I did these things, but it probably is even worse than that. And if those kids got up there and testified and were walked through these crimes, number one, imagine how traumatizing for them. But number two, the things that would come out of their mouth, it would be like, whoa. Okay. So the fact that someone like her is pleading guilty to me is a control tactic and Finally, in these cases, because we always say, why did they go to trial? Just like the Shonda thing we just watched. Why did she go to trial? Finally, we have somebody with what appears to be a little bit of common sense in regard to this. She had to have been shown the evidence. It was like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way, right? If I go to trial, my kids have to testify. They're going to say even worse things about me. And it's going to be really, really bad. And I'm going to go to prison for a really, 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 really long time. So it was in her best interest to not take this to trial right and it was in other people's best interest you don't want your kids having to relive this trauma because again in my opinion they would have some pretty nasty things to say about her now this is again this is their mother it is what it is it's their mom you know they're probably going to want to reunite at some point I mean, who knows you know it's a relationship that will be there forever you know what i'm saying and so i get that and hope whatever is best for the kids to heal and move on happens now also in this conversation the jody thing again this is my thought on the jody thing so many people have come out speaking against jody she's twisted okay point blank period so i a hundred percent think that oh, what's your name ruby is going to fall in line with all these other people i thought she was this life coach i signed up and systematically she just kind of brainwashed me and did all this type of stuff you know it's a very easy scapegoat but ruby was right there alongside of her you know so i view her just as guilty but it's like if somebody has to go down I think Jody had more of a widespread reach on people, it seems, because so many people are just coming forth with these personal stories of these horrifying things that Jody has done to them as a person. Neither of them are nice people, but Jody has way more things that I'm like, this is like, I'm surprised she hasn't called charges before. You know? <laughs> Same with Ruby, though, with her kids and stuff like that. She's just lucky that she felt, you know, didn't get charges before with things related like this to doing harm to children. Here's my thought. Do I think she'll go to prison? Yes. For how long? Who knows? I think it's cute that she wants to sit here and talk about, I've been incarcerated for three months and changed my life realm. No. Ruby doesn't, and still doesn't look like a well person. Even in the height of her Eight Passengers channel, she doesn't look well. And I don't know any other way to say that other than 
when I looked at those videos, the older videos, I was like, this is somebody who's going through something. And I'm not trying to sit here and put her down for that because many people can go through stuff, but also many people don't end up doing these horrific acts to their children while going through something. You know what I'm saying? They handle a little bit different way or monetizing their family. Another thing I thought was like, it wouldn't surprise me for her to try and monetize this situation once it's all said and done. You know, I mean, that's what she's done, right? She monetized the family until that train wreck was a train wreck and she had to move on over to another grift. So I think she's definitely going to prison. It's just a matter of how long. And I think she probably needs to be in there for a minute. You know, because again, this kind of belief system that she went down, that she's just talking about, oh, all of a sudden out of the blue, Jody, you know, had me believe in this and the other. Mm -mm. No, this doesn't happen overnight like that. I don't believe that one bit. Again, if you look at the evidence, if you look at all the older footage, all the other videos and things like this, she was doing this bizarre treatment to her children a long time ago and it escalated and it 100% was going to end up in one of them losing their life. I mean, that's the thing. When you go down this rabbit hole, it, it's just that's what ends up happening. And it's frightening and thank God they're all alive and hopefully will be reunited with whoever they need to be reunited with. My jury is still out on Kevin. You know, I know that's the father. I really don't have much to say about him, you know, because that was a whole tawdry situation. I just feel like if both parents were this easily swayed and all this by Jody, you know, it's concerning. So anyways, that's it. If you're still watching, I greatly appreciate you watching all the way to the end of the video. I do thank you. Let me know what do you think. Do you think, uh, big questions here. Do you think she's going to go to prison? If so, for how long? And then it's just general opinions. What did you think of her, the crimes? What did you think of the lawyer statement? Do we think, I think Jody's going away for a long time. I think that they are gearing up to take her down. And that is their thing. They're like, look, we want Jody. Like, we want to get her for A, B, C, and D, and we're going to take her down. So I think they've lined Ruby up to be their pawn for that, and it ain't going to fare well for Jody. Anyways, that's it. Roscoe, thanks you for being here. Roscoe says, please drop some sofas in the comment section so we can go down there and sleep and snore and do little Roscoe things. And until we do go down there to sleep, snore, and hang out with y'all and talk, we'll see y'all soon.